Hi sisters. sisters, James Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see, I'm not in my normal studio setup and I have an amazing special guest with me. Oh my, my god. beautiful, I'm not even Thank gonna you. let you introduce her. Right? My beautiful, oh my amazing gosh. mother, Tati Westbrook. You guys, this woman literally is the woman of the makeup community and what many of you guys do not know is that we filmed together twice. You filmed on my I've channel. I've been on your channel several You've times. You've been here in this studio. Yes. This is like a first time for me yes. on yours. Yes. So hi it's been guys. meaning to happen oh for gosh. way too long. We've literally, I don't know how it slipped through us. Know. It literally was an accident. So Tati and I have actually been friends for like two and a half years now, probably. She's literally been here since the beginning of my makeup career. She helped me move out to Los Angeles. I went to her and James's wedding in Hawaii. Yes. Literally, they flew me there and bought me pants because I could not even oh afford gosh. to be there, which is so I crazy. I can't even believe that. Like how far you have come. Like honestly, it's been I just, like, okay, like I'm gonna brag about you on your channel. For a moment oh because, please do. <laughs> Just um, you texted me. I remember I'm about to get married and I'm all like ah, you know. And James was so sweet. He did my makeup. It was such a beautiful experience. But you could not find pants, and you mm -mm. were so stretched thin. You know, YouTube hadn't become a livable, paying job yet for I was, you. I was so broke. it's just, you know, it's so insane to see how far you've come and, and how far you've grown. And I reached out to James, you know, way back when because he was so mega talented and like. It's so cool to watch, you know, what you've become. You're the best. No, oh my really. God, oh, I'm so it's proud of you like, and everything I, that I you've done that. too. I mean that. So we just have so much love for each other and like, I'm so happy to be here. We've been friends for three years. For some reason, literally this happened by accident, swear to God, she's never been on my channel before. I've been on hers a few times. We thought it was only right to do something iconic for today's video. Yes. Thank you for being here. Of this course. idea is actually Tati, so. I live here, so. Yeah, yeah. So Tati actually came up with the craziest idea ever. Yes. I have a younger demographic. You do, so okay. They, they were probably not alive yet. I, I don't know if I was alive yet for this show. I don't know how many of you remember Supermarket Sweep, but it used to be this game show where people would have time to go like down the aisles and they'd like, you know, knock over things from the aisle into their carts and they'd have like 60 seconds to do it. And I was seeing a bunch of memes about this and I was like, oh my God, it would be so fun if we went into a Sephora and had 60 seconds to, to literally just like grab, 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 grab. To get and our then, entire makeup yes, routine. Yes, yes, and sit down and have to create a look off of that. I'm, I'm nervous. So, I'm so ready for this. Like when you texted me with this idea, I was like, oh my God, we have to do this right now. Such a cool idea, like a blast from it. the past. I watched a few clips of it last night from YouTube yes. and it sounds like it's gonna be so much fun. So for today's video, Sister Tati and I are gonna be doing Sephora sweep and we are going to go to our local Sephora and we are going to run in. We're going to have 60 seconds to grab as many products as we possibly can mm -hmm. for our makeup routine. Have you thought about this though? Like, I, do you have a game plan? I do, I have a strategy. I have kind of a small one, but I'm- I don't I'm think we like, should share it with each other. No, I'm not going no. to. <laughs> but I was actually kind of stressing out about this because I was like, I need so many things. Like I need, I, I'm high maintenance, high. I'm so high maintenance. I love that for you. So wait, are brushes included in that or no? No. no we can use our own brushes, definitely not. right? We're yeah. making our own rules. It's our own challenge, Def so yeah. yeah, whatever. We need to go. We need to go. We're gonna Let's be going here. do- it's <laughs> What is this video? <laughs> <laughs> we need to go do some sister shopping at Sephora. Bye. I'm ready. You ready? No. There's a lot of people trying. If there's any sisters in Sephora, I'm not trying to interrupt our menu. I know. I'm actually concerned about that a little bit. Do we get to press pause or no? No, we, we definitely just work can't. We it, definitely right? can't. Okay. Just say like sorry. It's like a speed bump. Yeah, a sister speed bump. There's so many employees. We're good. We're good. It's a 
Oh, oh my we'll just put whatever I don't use in the giveaway. Yeah. Lipsticks, bronzer, foundation, liner, um, highlight. You got so many things I don't understand. And I know you have a Sephora card. Yeah. I just started grabbing and I got way too much. This is oh, oh, oh my god. god. How did you do that in one minute? I'm like shaking. Oh my god. What have I done? I like blacked out. I don't even remember doing this. All right, sisters, we are back from Sephora and I have one bag of a few things. Tati has two entire bags of product. Oh I would gosh. love to know what your strategy was. What I did is I went in and I knew that if I grabbed my foundation, then I could go to like the sample type area and just be like, oh, right? that's smart. But, okay, but then I had this moment where I totally forgot like what I had even picked out where I kind of almost like blacked out in the middle of Sephora. And I was like, time's running out and it got really dramatic. And so I just started like grabbing things. And in the back of my head, I was like, you know what? I'll just put this in a giveaway. Like that will oh, be- Oh, good thinking. Right? So I was like, just go ahead, overdo it because you have no strategy. You suck at this. And I really thought that you were going to be like, ding, ding, ding. Well, ding, I like, did have a strategy. What was it? Three uh, products? <laughs> you watch your attitude, ma'am. <laughs> I wanted to go, I was gonna go right to Too Faced and then okay. Anastasia, which okay. I did, mm -hmm. but it took me probably 20 seconds to find the Anastasia counter, which is an issue. But I knew by hitting them both, I could get foundation mm -hmm. and then concealer and then powder all from Too Faced because I like the whole line, the mm -hmm. Born This Way and then the peach powder. Mm -hmm. And then Anastasia, I could get contour and brows mm -hmm. and lip. Uh huh. And did you? I missed lip from Anastasia, but I have everything else. Oh, well, I got lip from Anastasia. <laughs> oh, well, look at, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> So I'm gonna have a really good base going on today, but I don't know about much else, but that's okay. Yeah. I can go for a, a nice natural look. I, mean, I can literally recreate shoot. this exact, oh, I don't have a highlighter. I do. Oh. Wait, how? How did this even happen that I? Well, this I think has a highlighter in it. Does it? Oh yeah, that has a highlighter. Okay, dude, I have highlight, liquid, and pressed from Becca. What? And I have lashes. I don't understand how you even grabbed that many things. Like that is so much. Like, Cause I wasn't even thinking. I literally was just like grab, 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 grab. My makeup looks so pretty right now too. And I'm going to take it off and make it look. I'm actually good. having a good makeup day too. Our lives Life are so is... hard. <laughs> I have to tell you, like I always get a little bit nervous doing makeup around you. Why? Because I feel like you've gotten very advanced. You know, you're very creative with it. <gasps> Thanks, so man. I always stress a little bit. I'm like, oh. I hope my wing liner is suitable to be in public with James. I don't want to embarrass you. Oh my you. god. Well, I mean, you'll see my makeup routine. It's going to be throwing everything on and hoping it oh looks good. Can I just hour, leave my right? lashes on? Leave the lashes on. I will allow that and permit it in our fake challenge of no rules that we created. It's allowed. I have not setting spray. What? You're kidding! Yes. How did you? I don't I understand how you grabbed it's... everything. I know. So I have the Dior Air Flash, which. I've know. never tried this foundation really? before, never. I love this so much and I needed more because I was out. So I was like, good timing. This will work for me. I knew what shade I was. I didn't have to like, it's a number. So I was just like, did it, did it, 301. And I found it, it was good. I grabbed my Too Faced Born This Way. You guys know this is my all time holy grail. So I hope this isn't boring. I grabbed all the products that I normally use, but I want to win. Um, and I grabbed Wait. the shade Vanilla, which is my Wait. normal. What are we winning? <laughs> really nothing. I just wanted to look good, I guess. I know this is going to be like a light coverage look, so I'm not going to use too much, but I might look a little, Crazy. Yep, yep. Okay, where's my concealer? I don't know if this is even my shade. I just kind of grabbed. This is medium from Urban Decay. Shoot, this looks dark. Oh. Dang it. <gasps> That's not gonna work. How oh. is this medium? How is that medium? Okay. That's a fail. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna take some more foundation. Did you not get a concealer? Uh oh. Nope. Should we talk about the makeup community? Sure, why not? So if you sisters follow me on Twitter, which if you don't, you definitely should because let me tell you, my Twitter is a good and fresh time. I am about to spill some tea. So, <laughs> some ta tea. Oh! Uh, I am so funny. A few weeks ago, I was tweeting that I was working on a really, really big project. And then mm -hmm. I tweeted saying that I wasn't gonna be doing that project because it was really risky. Mm -hmm. And I never told you what it was. Oh, I did. Did I say what it was? I don't think you did. Basically right now, the beauty community is in shambles. And mm -hmm. Tati and I both happen to be ones that are on the outside chilling, having a really wonderful time living our lives. Yes. Love that for us. Okay, basically, long story short, I have not been doing well this month 
for many reasons. One of the reasons being, I spent an entire week of my life planning a documentary, which is now never going to happen, about the downfall of the beauty industry and why it is everyone involved's fault. And that may sound crazy, but me and Tati were actually talking a lot about it during the planning mm -hmm. process because it's obviously a very touchy subject and it's something that yeah. I am really passionate about and that I know Tati is really passionate about. So I figured for today's video, while we're like getting ready using our products, I thought it could actually be really interesting since we're obviously not doing like the full on documentary to kind of touch on some of the things we wanted to discuss because I feel like we're both still really passionate about it and like mm -hmm. it could be fun to talk about. Yes. Um, and also you've been in the industry for a very long time yes. and even someone that I've looked up to obviously since day one and I'm very blessed to call you a close friend now, but before I was here, you were here. I was here for, I was here for a minute, yeah. <laughs> so obviously you know my thoughts on all this, yeah, but I sure do. how do you feel about everything that's going oh, on right now? I agree with you that there are so many different sides to look at it and that in a way everybody could be doing things better. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just point fingers and be like, you're doing it bad, no. you're doing it bad. It's like, well, everybody's at fault. Everybody's at fault. Let's kind of see where we can adjust things. Like this stuff actually makes me super uncomfortable talking about it, but to me, it's really important too. I've had to navigate through this business in a very unique way. I don't have a manager. I don't have an MCN. I don't have an agent. I do work with a lawyer if I need to go through contracts. Like I'm smart about it. Yeah. And that's a very unique thing. Most people do work with a team. And I do, I do. you know, I do yep. have people that help me out, but there has been no book. Like you don't sign up to YouTube and they're like, here you go, these are the rules. Right. So I think everybody's kind of scrambling to do the right thing the best that they can for their audience, for themselves. It's exciting to want to work with big brands. So I get all the excitement and I get where people feel pressured to not disclose. But we're at a point. No, it's really not that hard. No, it is. I mean, I don't do sponsorships because really my audience does not like them and they right. feel that it cuts down on my level of trust. Well, that gets into the yeah. conversation about the consumer. For influencers, For, I'm saying it's not physically, like there's no challenge behind posting a caption saying this is sponsored. No, but I, I honestly don't think that I would have the success or credibility that I have if I had done a ton of sponsorships. So I've been someone that I really... Agree has not done a ton. It's been challenging because there have been people that will take sponsorships and say that it hasn't been sponsored. And I know that it has because the same offer, offer came yep. to me. That happens and to me I'm all like, the time. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's weird. It's unique, I think, from our standpoint. We see it all and there's so much that the audience doesn't see. Well, I think that is a huge part too. In my documentary, and this is gonna come across as very controversial, but I believe there are issues on all parts. Being influencers, mm -hmm. the main thing being disclosing. Of course, there's lots of other factors as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk about brands in a second because that's my favorite topic. But consumers, I think one of the major issues is that there's really a disconnect in the sense that a lot of consumers hold YouTubers to two different standards at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think that they hold YouTubers to the standards of celebrities in the sense that they want them to have perfect track records, perfect backgrounds, behave well, be on a very, very tight schedule, never mess up, and mm -hmm. just like be a role model. At the same time though, a lot of people completely disregard that standard and then say that YouTube isn't a real job, that mm -hmm. people should not be paid anything, yeah. And that people are money hungry. And then when people do do sponsorships and disclose, people say, oh, we are selling out. Or, oh my God, like, mm -hmm. wow, you need money that badly. Or like, it's yeah, a little I bit of a you. twisted system. You. And I think that at the end of the day, consumers are consumers. And it sounds really blunt and stupid to say, but it's like consumers get to choose what they want to consume. And at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it's up to the consumers, you sisters at home watching, to make an educated decision on who you want to watch, who you want to support, what brands you want to buy from. Yeah. Like that's that on that. Like there's there's no, really not. I actually, I feel similar. I get that. There's just no way to dice it. We are role models. I think that's something you do have to be mindful of if you're in this business is that you have a lot of eyes on you, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not. Right. You are in some way shaping the world, yeah. which sounds really crazy, but when you have millions of, of people. people watching and you are, you know, sharing your opinion and whatnot. Like we are role models, but yes, it is up to the consumer to really decide and do research and not just go down one avenue. I think that a lot of people have gotten overexcited and maybe they say yes too often. Like, wait, last month you loved that foundation and this month you love this one and which one is it? Right. And if it's not just like constant review, constant review, you know, I do a five day a week show, so I'm constantly in products, not necessarily the stuff I use and travel with every single day. I'm just kind of breaking it down and giving you my immediate feedback. So that's right. kind of my gig. So my whole thing is I wish that our community was a little bit more selective 
And I think sometimes it's the managers that are a little aggressive because they're making money off of us too. Mm -hmm. I'm going right? to move on to the peach powder while we talk okay, about this. Yeah, I'm because continue highlighting. You brought up brands product. and this is a topic that I am very passionate about. Okay. Obviously, you know this and all the sisters of this too. My biggest passion aside from makeup is marketing. Yes. And I really like business. It's like my favorite thing to do. I'm just yes. very passionate about it. So I like good. the inner, thank you. Mm -hmm. I, that means a lot. I just really like the inner workings of things. Mm -hmm. It's always very much interested me. And the business of beauty is something that is really messed up on a lot of different levels. Oh. It's a very oh. broken system. It sure is. I think the major thing with brands and beauty is that a lot of brands, and I'm not naming anybody specific, so don't even try to start drama with this. I'm speaking very generally because the reality is this is to a lot of different brands. A lot of brands don't really know how to target their right demographic. And therefore spend their advertising dollars in the wrong way. I can't believe I'm even going to discuss this on camera, but we're doing honestly, it might as well. There was a video that just went up recently by Marlene Estelle, the yes. owner of Makeup Geek, and it was talking about her truth of the industry. It really created quite the ruckus. Makeup Geek is a brand that I've loved since day yeah. one. I really Same. purchased a lot of their shadows. They're one of the first brands that I ever bought from. I thought that their shadows were phenomenal. Over the past year, Makeup Geek has kind of like slowly slipped under the radar mm -hmm. in like the beauty space. People don't really talk about them that much anymore. And Marlena made her video about her truth to the beauty industry. I actually agree with a lot of the points that she was making in the video, wanting to support smaller artists and like the industry changing, blah, 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 blah. I get it. And, but there was one thing that she said in the video that literally like shook up the beauty industry so much. She basically said that Makeup Geek is failing because of the fact that she refuses to charge big influencers $60,000, which is the rate that she's been given. Because of that personal thing that happened and her being on video, the whole 60,000 thing created a witch hunt against mm -hmm. influencers. And I have never had so many hate comments on videos about product placement before. You really don't do that many sponsorships. I, I don't either. I counted, like, cause I was like, gosh, you know, am I, am I in this? Like, I don't really know. Out of the past 120 videos that I have produced, yep. I believe there's six, Maybe six, maybe seven. Yeah. Um. You know, and they weren't. I. I don't even think all of those were dedicated videos. They're just like mentions. Yeah. So I really, I try so hard to run my business in a way that makes sense, where I can support my own brand, which I invested everything in myself. I don't have any outside funding. I wanted to run it my way. So I've worked really hard to be smart, support brands I love, be smart about that, know my worth. Um, like I've done this in, a, in the right way right. and like you have done this in the right way too, where you're so creative, you pour everything into your channel. You have to have financial support somewhere because you do have to pay for your team. Yes. You do have to pay for the lights. You do have to pay for the makeup. You do have a lot of expenses. So once you get to this level, it is. It's very expensive it's, yes. to run a business. And I will. It is. The reason I didn't do the documentary is because I truly believe that this industry is based on ignorance and the people believing that this is just like a really good time of people that they love and look up to just putting on makeup and calling it a day. When in reality, this is a business. If you don't want to look at it that way, that's fine because you can just enjoy the content. We're working hard for you guys. We're obviously here to make everybody happy. Like it's what we love doing. Mm -hmm. But if you can't accept the fact that this is a business, I don't want to tell you. And the 60,000 was thrown around and it mm -hmm. was such a controversial number because $60,000 is so much money. Yeah. But I will say, the best way I can think about it is, this goes back to the consumerism. A lot of the consumers say, YouTubers should not be paid this. They're just sitting in front of a camera. They don't deserve to make any money. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. You want to think that? Great. Mm -hmm. Consumers are the ones spending the money. So consumers are the ones who buy makeup and it's unrealistic to just say, if you hate the beauty industry, stop buying makeup because it's never gonna happen. It's a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. Consumers are the ones who put the money in the brand's pockets and the brands have to advertise. Brands that don't advertise fall under the radar. And all brands have advertising budget. Every single brand ever. Except has for a, mine. <laughs> most, <laughs> most brands, well, you're the advertising budget. Just, you just don't have to pay for it because it's you. No, feel bad for me, I have no budget. Yes. Right. I've already been taking mine, so I'm on, I only have a few days left of my okay. first thing. It is true though. Okay, jokes aside, most brands have huge budgets and what they spend in traditional media would be, you would just be shocked. Right, so think about it this way. If a brand wants you to know? do a campaign, right? Say influencers are off the table, we hate influencers, bye, your job's over. That leaves a brand to do a traditional media campaign. I'm going off on this. This is something that I'm very passionate about. You want to do a traditional media campaign. You now have to assign the work to the people that are in your internal team and they have to plan the whole campaign. 
Great. Mm -hmm. Once the campaign is planned, you have to rent a studio space, which is very, very expensive in Los Angeles. Then you have to rent all of the equipment. You mm -hmm. have to hire a videographer. You have to hire a photographer. You have to hire a producer. You have to hire all the models and pay their day rate. Mm -hmm. You have to hire hair and makeup to do their entire faces mm -hmm. to get them ready for the commercial. You have to hire an editor to then work on the finished project and hire probably assistants to help you out and make sure that the set day runs smoothly. That's probably gonna cost upwards of like two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars for an entire day of shooting. That's true. But that's not it. Because then once you have the finished commercial fully done, mm -hmm. it's not just gonna sit on your little flash drive at your desk. You actually have to get it shown. And that's where the things get really pricey because then these brands have to pay for advertising space. And let me tell you, because this is a constant battle that YouTubers are always fighting, advertising is very, very expensive. To get ads running on TV networks on popular channels during the Super Bowl, it costs several hundred thousand dollars for a few seconds. So you probably spent let's say $500,000 to get this commercial made and now shown, right? Mm -hmm. And your goal is to make a million dollars of sales. Your profit margin has now been 50%. This is a lot of math. It is. And this model has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years mm -hmm. and it's worked very, very well for yes. major brands. So a brand pays an influencer. Back to the original decision, brand wants to do a campaign. Traditional media, buy. Influencers are back, you get your job back, you're welcome. We wanna do a campaign with an influencer, great. So they say, hey James, we want you to do a video about our product. Right? They don't have to pay for the studio space because it's already in the house. Okay. They don't have to pay for the equipment because it's already in the house. They don't have to pay for the videographer, editor, photographer, or model mm -hmm. because that's already the influencer's job. Mm -hmm. They do that already on YouTube. Once the video is already fully produced, they don't have to pay for advertising space either because the YouTube channel of the influencer is already getting viewed by millions of people. Say the brand still wants to make a million dollars. Back to Marlena's video, they pay said influencer $60,000. Their profit margin is now 94%. Why in any way, shape, or form would a brand pay $500,000 when they could pay $60,000 and get a very same, if not maybe even better, because right now a lot of people are looking to influencers for true honest reviews, mm -hmm. result. Yes. Why? It doesn't make any sense. Influencer marketing, regardless of whatever your personal opinion on it may be, is a system that works. It's a system that is very, very efficient and is a system that is very, very cost effective. And it's probably not gonna go away for a very, very long time. So I think it's up to the public to educate themselves on it and not hate it. Because it's, it's not the influencer's problem that they're taking a deal. It's the fact that advertising exists in every single industry mm -hmm. and the beauty industry is a billion dollar industry. Mm -hmm. and. Everybody needs to make money and support themselves somehow from the consumer to the influencer to also the brand owner. I think that you have to look at the realistic overall, you know, math of everything. And again, it gets a little bit cluttered when you look at one person who has X amount reach, another person has a different reach, and really like throwing out a broad number like 60K made everybody feel like that was just a universal number for every single person that right. puts up content. And that's just not the case. It was just very irresponsible. If I'm, I, yeah, if I'm being I, well, honest. I mean, I have to agree with that. I like Marlena. I've loved her products for so long. You know, I put in my truth video, an email exchange, not wanting money from her. I think a lot of people have loved her brand. A lot of people have loved her product. I think she probably has a lot of frustration with, you know, relationships falling apart, like that whole behind the scenes, I'm not going to get into. No, it's, but it's nobody's business. It's nobody's business. Um, I mean, I have so much that I could just lay out on my channel all the time, but it's just not appropriate because you guys don't come to see me for that. You come for reviews, you come to escape the world. Right. I do my best to not throw all of that information that's private your way to confuse you. So I, I do agree with that number being thrown around. It was kind of like, wait, what? Whoa. It stirred up a lot of dirt. It really did. It started this weird tension of what's the right way to do this business. And but like the reality that is whole everyone thing, has their, everyone can do it their own way. Everyone has their own way, yeah. you know? And as long as you are being honest with your subscribers, great. I think that the influencers need to be more honest and then they need to be very open when they're doing mm -hmm. sponsorships. Mm -hmm. I think that influencers should only take sponsorships when it's a product that they actually care about. One, I think it makes everybody else look really bad. Yep. Two, you're diluting everybody else's rate card. Mm -hmm. Three, you're going to lose the trust of your own subscribers. So you're, yes. there's my piece of advice for you. You're ruining it for yourself. As for brands, I think that they need to do a better job of educating themselves on how marketing works and who they want to work with. Hiring someone with 5 million followers and they're getting 10,000 likes, that engagement is very, very low and it's probably not someone who's going to make you that money back. Whereas you can hire someone with 5 million followers that's getting 500,000 likes, 10% engagement, which is usually a very good typical number, you're probably gonna make your money back. 
it's up to the brand. Make the right decision, do your research on who is doing well, whose name is being talked about a lot, and who has good engagement and who can really convert to sales. And it's for the consumers, make an educated decision on the industry that you're supporting. Pick people that you wanna watch that you believe are genuinely here for the right reasons. Pick people that you see working really, really hard. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with doing sponsorships as long as you truly believe that they like the product. And once again, that's up to you as a consumer to decide mm -hmm. how genuine they're actually being. Also at the same time though, mind your own business. Love you sisters the most. You guys are very good about this. I'm not saying this is you, but it's a general issue in the beauty community. These numbers should have never even been brought to the surface in the first place. They were nobody's yep. business. And From I think it was very, very irresponsible. Capacity. No. And I think because it's out there, that's why I feel okay to discuss yeah. it. It's a business whether you want to admit it or not. And of course, yes, I'm here to inspire people and to make people happy. Trust me, I would not be here anymore if it was not for that because this job behind the scenes can be so insane. So I am going to touch on the whole, you know, this is a job. This is a business. Business. You know, for me, I have employees. I do have to show up to work every day. There's just no different way to slice it. So I do approach this as a business and I take it very seriously. And that doesn't mean that I'm not passionate about it. That doesn't mean I don't love it. Um, it just means that this is something really incredible that turned into the best job ever. And I'm not ashamed of that. You know, no, like, and you shouldn't be either. But so many people are. And they're like, oh, I hate that YouTube feels like a job. You know, and it's like, well, but it's the best job. It is. You know, and I feel really privileged. So on one hand, I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful. I don't want anybody to get the vibe that I'm not. But there are a lot of things that are very stressful and that give us just a feeling of pressure a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that number being released kind of made us all feel like, oh my God, we're all the bad guy. We should feel horrible. When that was just one isolated incident. And I think as far as ROI goes for business, you are so spot on with that. Like, I really feel that brands need to do more education. Don't be afraid to ask for analytics. They're there. I think these issues are all very fixable. Mm -hmm. I think if everybody just had a little bit more respect for everybody else, everybody mm -hmm. did their proper research yes, on who yes. they want to support, who they want to buy from, who they want to watch, this industry would be much better off. And I really just wish everybody would stop being greedy, whether it be for money, for brand deals, or for information, mm -hmm. and just get back to what it really is. Yes. It's just makeup. I think that we can move in a more positive direction, and I think the community needs to be more respectful of each other instead of pointing fingers and playing the blame game because like, we're all in this together, and I don't like hearing that the community is falling apart. You can only trust yourself. And like, I try so hard to not be jaded in this community, mm -hmm. right? Like, you have to keep some openness about you, yeah. right? And you have to believe that there can be good. And I think we have the best job on earth, and it, it's so exciting, and we're so blessed. That doesn't mean it's not hard. Doesn't mean it's not a ton of work and a ton of pressure, um, but it is good. And you guys give us that. And I'm so grateful. And James is so grateful. I just think people are tired of being dragged yeah. in every which direction. It's like, hey, let's all have a better attitude about it. Let's all disclose. Let's all be a little more honest. And let's all see our part of it instead of pointing a finger at everybody else. Right. Amen. And the setting spray is coming through. I was going to say, speaking of makeup, let's go back to our makeup. I'm almost done with my routine because I only have... Because you only had three products and I literally have a disaster in front of me. This is like chaos. I will show you guys. I have a little liner set from Marc Jacobs. This was one of the minis. I have the TARDIS Pro to go. That's how I did this eye look. I have Tati. a mini on Anastasia. What was your total? Don't ask me. Oh my God, don't, you're judging me now. What was your total? Well, because I get $60,000 every time I hold up a blush, you know. I spent $500 in one minute. Oh my God! <laughs> There's the title of the video. $500 in one minute. Oh my God, you're literally kidding me. No, I'm not. I panicked. I really wanted to impress you. I love that. You're really No, the I really the world. wanted to impress you because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Well, be you look literally beautiful. Oh, thank you. So you really killed okay. us. Okay. I was like, I'm going to be on Sister James's channel. I want his audience to like me I'm and like, you know, I want to do a good job. And so I kind of, I really like you guys. I like blacked out at Sephora. I love how you had 87 products and I had three and you still finished before me. I was very distracted. How much did you spend? I spent 177. That's still a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> I bought like five products. Now. For those of my younger subscribers who may not be an audience of Tati, first of all, you should be. Second of all, this woman uploads five videos a week. I literally have a mental breakdown over posting two a week. Okay, so since okay, I don't so have a lip product, I'm just going to take my foundation off and I'm going to use my regular lip color. 
Oh, I wish I could do that. I don't think my lips are that pigmented, actually. All right, you guys, and those are our completed looks with our makeup fully done using our Sephora Sweep items. You look so beautiful right now. Thank you. I'm thank so you, bad that you killed you. this. Oh my gosh, yay. <laughs> like, I had to look good for my first time on your channel, so like, good. You would have looked beautiful regardless, but I'm very impressed. You clearly do not have a game plan and you still did better than me, so that's... Thanks. Hey, you got some freckles. You look great, so you're I good. did. You're I'm good. The items that I chose, I love. Mm -hmm. I may have not gotten as many items as I wanted, but the items that I chose, I do love. So Good. I feel okay. I'm a little scared that I don't have any highlighter on right now. I feel very, very empty. Um, no, I can't. I can't cheat. I think you look good. Thanks. Yeah. I'm happy with the way it turned out. Definitely leave us a comment down below and tell us who you think won this competition. It's oh, definitely we're, Dante. Oh, wait, we're, we're dueling right now. But yeah. I spent a lot more money, so this is... <laughs> You know? It's okay, we're both really, really rich from our $60,000 from everything that we did in this video today. If you guys enjoyed this video today, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up down below and come show your sister support. Subscribe, come join the sisterhood. It is an amazing time. We are 8 million sisters strong. I love oh to have you gosh, join the incredible. family. Click oh the bell icon God. so you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you enjoyed my mother, you guys all have to go subscribe to her right Thank now. You. Please, I'm gonna list her channel down below. Oh my God. Glam Life Guru, Living Legend. Hey. Oh, living legend, thank you. Yeah, so, over yeah. on Tati's channel, mm -hmm. I turned her stepson into a drag queen and it was yep. his first time ever wearing makeup, so that was insane. Big experience for him, <laughs> insane. it was such a good sport. It was so, so much fun, so yeah. definitely go subscribe, check out that video. This video's sister shout out goes to sister Emma. Thank you so much, love, for always following and supporting you. I love you literally so, so, so much. And if you'd like to be the next video's sister shout out, don't forget to always retweet your video links when they go live on Twitter. I also really hope you guys enjoyed this like little business conversation. I know this was not planned. No, that was kind of like came video. out of nowhere. It was like, hey, I was thinking of this thing. Let's chat about it all. <laughs> It really I'm did. Like, oh, but this is a there. topic that I know both Tati and I are very, very passionate about. Yes. This industry is something that we care a lot about. I mean, clearly it shows this woman has been here for eight years, absolutely killing it, being such a huge role model to me and everybody oh, else involved. And thank you. it's an industry that we don't want to see fail. And right now yeah. I feel like it's in a very, very uncomfortable and weird place. And everybody has just a little bit of a weird feeling in their heart. So I just wanted to address these issues head on because I went from being someone who literally could not even afford to buy makeup to being a small influencer, to being a bigger influencer, to then being at the level of literally working on consulting and marketing with these brands. So yeah. I've seen all aspects of it and I truly believe that it can be fixed. I believe that we're all here for one shared love, yes. being makeup, Amen. and I just wanna see it go back to that. And everybody has to work hard and put food on the table and nobody can eat lipstick forever. So let's um, leave it at that. Also, amen. Yeah. If you like my sister's crew deck, don't forget to check out sisters-apparel.com for all your cute sisters gear. Oh, I'm going there right now to order some. Oh, that. please do. <laughs> I'll get you some. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video today. We love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye.